I'm Holly Kovo from Fitting Fitness In. I'm a personal trainer and nutrition specialist, and welcome to Get Healthy with Holly. Today I have my guest, Elida. Elida is um, a student in my classes. She takes my Zoom class as well as the live class in the community center, and I'd like to thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I consider Elida to be the bionic woman. She has had both knees replaced and both hips replaced. Can you tell me, how old were you when you had your knees replaced? I, had my, I started having my first knee replaced when I was 69. I uh, had gotten to the point where I was living on uh, Advil, Aleve, and chondroitin, and glucosamine, and I just got to the point. And then we were going to take a trip out of the country, and I was afraid that I would get someplace and not be able to walk. So I had went to the orthopedic uh, doctors, and they scheduled my first knee replacement. Awesome. And how did that come out? That came out very well. I, um, one of the things, I was lucky enough, I was young enough and it was long enough ago that I was able to go to, uh, after, the, after the operation, I went up into uh, intensive, not intensive care, but, okay, let me think. Re rehab? Uh, rehab. I went to rehab. Yep. I went to rehab and I was in rehab. And going to rehab at that time, I didn't want to go to rehab. I thought, this is awful. I've been in the hospital for three days and I don't want to go to rehab. But it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it, I had physical therapy and care for the whole time, every day, the whole time I was there. Plus, by the time I got home, it was not so difficult for my husband to handle me with a new knee. Right. So, and then, so you were 69, you went on your vacation, you I had fun? On, I went on vacation and had fun. And yes, that, yes. when did you have the second knee done? I had my second knee done four years later. And it was the same thing. I was having trouble walking upstairs, and it was bothering me. And I knew knew that it was probably arthritis, and so I went back and I had the same doctor, who was wonderful, did my second knee. I was very lucky with both my knees. I uh, had very good motion from from practically day one, and I've never had any problem with them. That's great. So, um, and then how about the hips? And then my hips. My hips came in, and I had my first hip done in 2017. And that, that came on kind of suddenly. All of a sudden, I um, was having trouble lifting my leg into the car, my right leg. I, I couldn't lift it up. If I lay flat on my back, I couldn't lift it up. And I went back to the orthopedic doctor, the same one who'd done my other two, and he took one look at my x-rays, and he said, this was in June, and he said, how about July? So, <laughs> I got my first hip done in July, and then my second hip I got done a year later. Wow. So uh, I started at 69, and I got finished just before seven, well, just before, I don't remember. Anyway. Can we tell how old you are now? Are you yes, old? I'm 81. 81. Uh, 81 and still going strong. I'm still going strong. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, what would you say was the hardest thing about the surgery? The hardest thing about the, the knee surgery was uh, the exercises. Uh, thanks to my husband who did everything, he told, told me that my job was to exercise. And since I like that. <laughs> since you're supposed to exercise uh, both, knee, both legs, even though the knee, only one knee has been replaced, it took me quite a bit of a day to do all of the required exercises. However, I'm, I'm confident that by doing the exercises that were required is what made my knee motion as good as it is. Mm -hmm. And but he did everything else, the cleaning, the cooking, and everything. So that just my job had one job. He's a keeper. He is a keeper. Definitely, that, definitely that's nice. Keeper. Well, you definitely have to do the exercises. You have to do the physical therapy afterwards and the exercises. And um, what about did you exercise before you had surgery? Um, I started exercising, doing aerobics and Pilates uh, in about late 90s, 98, 99, when I retired. And, um, and I had a teacher that I did it five mornings a week, 
and I did this for uh, actually practically until she retired and I was no, no longer able to do it. And then I spent a period of time, so probably, and then probably the beginning of the pandemic, I was in Ecuador and um, I needed to exercise and I found out about Holly and her Zoom. So I thought this is something I can do when I'm overseas. So I signed up to do Zoom with Holly and I continued with Zoom with Holly until we got home and then we were stuck in Ecuador because of the pandemic. And when we got home, I continued doing Zoom with Holly and that's how I got to know Holly. That's right. So that was my classes that I teach for the town of Boxborough because you're originally from, you live in Boxborough. Correct. So that was, that was nice. I know it was really great. You know, we had people all over the place coming in through Zoom for the class. It was awesome. Oh, I, I tell you that without that, it was just one more thing to do. We were in, we were in uh, lockdown in Ecuador from two o'clock in the afternoon till five o'clock in the morning. And so during the day we were, I mean, during all that period of time, and we could only go out during the day to, to go to the grocery shore, store. So we weren't allowed to run or anything. We yep. were, not, were not allowed to exercise. Grocery store medical medical facilities was all we could do. So it was it gave me a, something to do at the time, and I was I needed to get back into exercising. Awesome. Well, now you do great. Now you do very well. Um, let's talk about the hip replacements for a minute. There's there's three different types of hip replacements. Um, but the, originally, back in 1874, it was. Um, what was his name, Van Langenberg, or Van Langenbeck, had talked about doing knee replacements way back in 1874, and then in 1957, they became more popular. Um, so there's three different um, forms, but I guess two are the more popular one. Um, the PA, which they call, which is the posterior approach, and the... Um, Anterior. Anterior, the DAA. So the lateral one isn't as popular anymore. So do you know what one, what yeah. approach you had? My, my approach was posterior, and I think that depends upon the individual and the doctor. Uh, I had very good success with my posterior. I would highly recommend it, but, but I, it's up to, it depends upon who decide, who's doing it, your configuration, your body configuration, a lot of things come into which one you get done. Mm -hmm. And I would say that uh, it's between you and your doctor where I would not be pushing one or the other. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. obviously the doctor is going to make that decision and some of them are more comfortable with one method than the other. But I did hear that it's really great and easier recovery when it's the posterior no, one. No, the anterior. Oh, the anterior one? Oh, okay. I think the anterior is, is a faster recovery but I can tell you that my recovery was not that difficult, and uh, I, I would say that that would not be a reason not to have the posterior. So we have a slide that we'll put up that shows a double hip replacement, like an x-ray version of the double hip replacement, because I had never seen what a hip replacement actually does. And so it's really interesting that, you know, there's like that ball and socket for the hip, and then they put this thing inside your bone. Right goes pretty far down it looked like so I'm wondering now when you go through the airport security do you t t does it ring I think that's a big that that's the biggest handicap of having my hips and my knees replaced is that we do travel and uh, every time you go to the airport you have to uh, go through the machine and of course it lights up and so then you have to call the lady over to come and give you the automatic the pat hand, down. hand cut the pat down <laughs> But other than that, I've had, I would say there was no negatives to having had them done. Oh, great. So do you carry something that shows that you, some little card that says you have those I have a card like that, but it, it, it's meaningless when you get to the airport. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not going to believe, they're not going to believe that little card. Oh, okay. Um, so let's talk about the knee replacements for a minute because that's near and dear to my heart because it's quite possible I'm going to be um, getting a knee replacement sometime in my future. We have a slide of that as well um, that shows a normal knee and then the replaced knee. And so I guess what my, my question is, when they put that, they put the piece here and then they put the piece um, on the, the leg. I mean, right now I have arthritis, so I have bone to bone clicking and, and the pain. So do you feel that anymore when you're bending your knees and stuff? I do not feel that anymore. Uh, some people have problems kneeling. Uh, after a knee surgery. Mm -hmm. I was very lucky. I, I, I am able to kneel. 
Uh, but I do know people who cannot kneel because of the, I guess, because of the pressure on the front of their knee. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, no, you don't hear the clicking. The difference, the difference between the knee, the, my difference, I don't know about everybody, but my difference is that after the knee surgery, they glue the, they glue the uh, prosthesis in so that you start exercising right, quick, right, right away, away yep. a lot of exercising. And which is very important. The hip, they let the bone grow around it. Oh, okay. So you're in, you're not doing as many exercises early on mm -hmm. as your bone grows around the uh, the uh, prosthesis. Yep. And so, I guess maybe it's better to do that earlier than later because bone growth is. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Between bone you and your doctor, every all that stuff is yeah, between you and your true. doctor. Yeah, that's true. That's true. What I do know is. How do they match the size of your knee? Uh, I'm not sure how he did that. I do know that he had a couple of possibilities that he, uh, maybe he waits until he opens up. I, mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you how he does that. Oh, okay. But anyway, he, I'm sure he got the right one. And both my legs are the same length, so I'm, <laughs> I'm doing fine. Both of them the same length. That's great. <laughs> That's funny. So I know that my active agers who have had knee replacements or hip replacements are, are very active. You know, so they, they can do much more now than they did were able to do before. Wow. So it's, you know, it's never something to just keep putting off, putting off. It's better to get it done, and then you can live your life, you know, the way you want to live. Um, I know you're an outdoors person. You really enjoy hiking and camping. Uh, how has that affected, have your replacements affected anything? My replacements have not actually affected it. Uh, I stopped backpacking uh, before my knees because I could no longer carry a backpack. Oh. And now I don't carry a backpack either. I carry a day pack, but now I, I would not carry a backpack, but probably because of my age. I'm not saying that I couldn't do it, but right. because of my age. But I still kayak, and I still bike, and I still hike. And I was hiking in the Andes two years ago, and uh, quite an interesting, fun hike, without a backpack, with just a day pack. Mm -hmm. and. I have no problem with those kinds of things. I um, don't. I ride a bike, and as I said, I kayak. And those there are the kinds. Those are what I did prior to my replacements, and I still do those things. And that's what's the beauty of it, and that you do get out there and keep exercising, right. and you do it. Now you plan on going to Florida for this for the winter. What's going to happen down there? Well, we camp, and we. Um, we camp in, in Florida, and we uh, camp at several different places, state parks and private par campgrounds. And, uh, and we do that for a couple of months. And in, it's, it's in a tent. In a tent. In a tent. In a tent. This lady is 81 years old, still camping for three months in a tent. I got to give it, <laughs> hand it to you. I mean, I'll camp. I'd love to do glamping. I've never done that, but I, I'll, I'll camp, but no, I'm not doing that for well, three months. Well, if you listen to anybody around us, they think we're glamping because we have so many things. To oh, okay. We have a tent, and we have a screen tent, and we have a stove, and we have shelves, and we have a pantry, and we have all these things we take in a, in a van, a van down to Florida. Everything fits in the van with our kayaks on top and our bikes behind. So if you ask anybody, they think we're glamping. But, but we're still in a tent. I don't know. If you're in a regular tent on the ground, that's not glamping. <laughs> <laughs> a camper with a bathroom and a shower, no, that's, that's no, better. No, no. But, no. <laughs> we don't have those things. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for telling me about your, your experience so other people can, um, can listen to this and know that there is a lot they can do after the surgeries and it's not so bad. Um, you know, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm lining up. It'll be, I'm hoping to push it off of another five years, but. Oh, don't push it off. Well, I don't think I'm ready yet. I'm gonna get some gel injections in my knee and then I'll be fine for a little while. All right, so we're gonna go to the kitchen and we're gonna make a nice, healthy, quick appetizer that you can bring to somebody's house for Thanksgiving or if you're hosting Thanksgiving. It's a shrimp, avocado, and cucumber appetizer. Do you want to join me in the kitchen? That would be great. Awesome. Here we are in the kitchen and we're gonna make a shrimp, avocado, and cucumber appetizer. And we start with a pound of shrimp 
And then we're going to use um, two cloves of garlic that are minced. And this is the garlic that I used, which we got from Barrett's Mill Farm, which I highlighted in my show last month. And then we do a tablespoon of finely chopped cilantro, a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Oh, no, here's cayenne pepper. Half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Um, a half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper, which I just put in together. And, um, and then we have some paprika, one teaspoon of paprika. So those are all gonna go into a marinade with some olive oil. So let's get that going. Let me start with the olive oil. So we do one tablespoon of olive oil in this marinade. Now, this is going to be a great appetizer if you want to use it for Thanksgiving. Maybe if you're hosting Thanksgiving or if you're not and you're going to somebody's house, you can bring something that's healthy and, um, and light, light instead of all that heavy stuff. All right, let me use my handy-dandy little spatula. And here is the garlic, the cilantro. the cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper comes from red chili peppers and um, it helps with production of your digestive juices so it's actually pretty good for your digestive system if you can handle the hot. <laughs> I'm not big on the hot. All right let's mix that together. Ooh. I think no more. I'm going to pour a little no bit more, more oil, oil in there um, just to make it a little thinner. Sometimes you have to adjust as you go along, you know? There we go. That looks much better. All right, let me pull this shrimp over, and I'm going to pour it in there. Let me do it so you can see. Here we go. So it's not a lot, but it's enough to coat it. So when we cook it, it's got something. Now, this shrimp, I, I dried it off. It was already divined and um, shelled, so it was frozen shrimp I got. I de-thawed it. I thawed it this morning and pulled the tails off. You just mix that around a little bit. Now, you don't really taste a lot of the cilantro. I know some people have an aversion to cilantro. My daughter, Marissa, does. Some people taste it, and it tastes like soap. Soap. Yes. Some people doesn't. So for me, it doesn't taste like soap. And I love it. And you love it. I love it. So we do the other teaspoon or tablespoon of olive oil in the pan. The recipe calls for two tablespoons. One goes in the marinade, and one goes in the pan. So let's do that, and we'll get this heat it up a little bit. Shrimp is really great um, source of antioxidants. It has astaxanthin, which helps prevent wrinkles, <laughs> and it lessens any sun damage. It also has a lot of selenium, omega-3 fatty acids. It has, it's very low in calories. It's high in protein, so it's a great protein source if you want to have protein that's um, not plant-based or not meat. But it is a little high in cholesterol, so you do have to be careful. You don't want to eat more than a pound of shrimp. And the cayenne pepper is from the dried pepper, chili pepper. Um, I talked about how it increases your digestive, it improves your digestion, but it also helps reduce your blood pressure. Oh. So yeah, not bad. And paprika is also from dried chili pe peppers, but it's usually from the ones that are a little bit sweeter, so it's a little bit milder than the cayenne pepper. I am going to put these in the pan, and then I'm going to let, ooh, look at that. That sounds good. And then I'm going to let Elida put together the avocado spread. These cook pretty fast, but I'm going to cook them in batches because I don't want the pan to be over crowded. And now Elida's going to make the avocado spread. And we start with one avocado, mashed, and we're gonna put a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, but why don't you go ahead and just pour a little, squeeze, um, turn a little bit in there. That's probably good. 
And then we have one tablespoon of lime juice. Yep, there you go. And then you're gonna mix that all around. Mash it all around. Mash it around, there you go. We're good at mashing. So when you camp, since you're such a big outsider, do you cook over the, the fire? We actually cook on a propane stove mostly, or grill, or charcoal grill, uh -huh. and um, that's what we do. We we grill we do grill a lot, but we actually cook real meals. We don't just cook fan we cook pretty fancy meals. Anything that doesn't require an oven or stove, I mean an oven or a microwave, you can make when you're camping. Yeah, so we um we grill a lot at home. Like we spent more money on our grill than on our oven. And um, now my husband has a really nice outdoor kitchen that I got him. I got him a grill Zebo, and he has a utility car, <clears throat> and he put some some lights on there because he's usually grilling at night. Right. So he's really excited to grill. So I make sure the meals are all grillable, and then I just do the sides inside. So he's always helping with dinner. Well, we we were camping once in, in around Easter time, and I did a ham on the grill for a, a group of people and and potatoes and they brought sides it was great fun nice very nice all right this is i just turned it down a little bit you know the nice thing about this convection stove and oven is it just heats up very fast and cooks very fast I think this is about as mashed as i can get it all right that looks it good looks good yeah so I made a little extra on this shrimp so that um, we can have some that you just put a, a little toothpick in and that can be the appetizer as well. Because some people don't like avocado and um, some people don't want the healthy part of it. <laughs> part of it, right. They just want the shrimp, the Cajun shrimp. So I, I made a little extra for that. <laughs> All right, these are looking pretty good. And give it another minute. You only really need a couple minutes on each side for these shrimp. Here we go. So I'm going to let you start by putting a slice of cucumber. So this is the English cucumber. Um, and the recipe calls for 22 slices. I did a little less than that, but... Um, we put them all out. Yep, put them out there, and then you'll put a little dab of the the avocado sauce on them, and then we'll top it with the shrimp. So the English cucumber is nice because it's very consistently round the whole time. Um, so you can get some really consistent rounds. Look at that. Not bad, huh? Very nice. Avocado, I love avocado. It's got a lot of great vitamins. Vitamin C, E, K, B6, which is great for your brain. It's got niacin, folate, magnesium, potassium. It has lutein, zeaxanthin, which is good for your eyes. I shouldn't be using my finger. And it's a healthy fat, so it's great. All right, I'm thinking these are kind of done. Let me turn if you have a little off. riper avocado, it will um, be a little more mashed than this. But, but in case you don't have a, a ripe avocado, you can go right ahead with what you have and it works just fine. Right. It's tough to I, find I a, a good avocado. Do you need a spoon? I do need a spoon. Okay. That might be better. I do need a spoon. I yeah, it's really nothing. hard. I mean, I went and I found multiple avocados. I put them in the brown paper bag to try to... Uh, Ripen, ripen them. them up a little bit, but we'll see. We'll this will see work just. Work. This will work just fine. It will taste the same. It'll work just fine, and add a little crunch. Yep, that's right. All right. So while you are finishing off those, I'm going to top a few of them. Ooh, these are big shrimp. I got the smaller shrimp too. Here we go. Oopsie. Move this over here. Got to stand over here. And top it with the smaller ones. 
So this looks really delicious, but I put a few right here so that we can just put some toothpicks in them because not everybody wants that healthy nest. They just want the Cajun shrimp. So you can do either or right. for your appetizer. Or both. Or both, right. That, okay. Absolutely, you can make a little extra, double the recipe for the shrimp part, and there you have it. it. Not bad. Huh? Looks good. Yeah. All right, thank you, Alida, for being a guest on my show. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about your experience with the joint replacements, and um, and I think that you're such an inspiration to people. Really, I think you are because you just take it in stride and just go and keep on going. Well, I just want everybody to know that if you're having a problem, get your joints fixed and you can live your life like you used to. That's right. That's right. It's awesome. So you can find the recipe for this shrimp, avocado, and cucumber appetizer on my website, fittingfitnessin.com. And I'd like to thank you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on Get Healthy with Holly.